Hi everyone, it's me here at Kimball. I'm out here in my field. Uh, those of you who have followed my uh, blog and my channel for a long time know that my wife and I bought the land next to us. Uh, it's got a beautiful small woods and a stream and uh, a field. I'll pivot around. You can see the field is overgrown. We had plans for this field and unfortunately we've come to the realization that our plans are unrealistic financially, you know. So the land sits here. The house that came with the land, the double wide down there, it's like a barn. We, uh, we put a lot of stuff in there. It's uh, our hoarder house. It's full of stuff. Um, but anyway, I planted an apple orchard here several years ago with a lot of enthusiasm and I have neglected them. I started out by putting a fence around them and uh, putting some, uh, planting some uh, a comfrey and uh, putting, uh, you know, I, I did things that you do when you're enthusiastic about a new project, like a new orchard. And uh, then life got in the way, uh, our plants changed, and I have neglected my trees. And I figured, well, okay, that's my plan. Benign neglect. And uh, yeah, so I have not been out to this planting of trees all year. It's November now. I'm out here. Uh, I was walking the dog. It's a beautiful sunny day in November, kind of unusual. And I figured I better just go up and see what these trees look like. And uh, I'm, I'm kind of pleasantly surprised benign neglect to a degree is working and I'm going to show you what I got here before I head back home it is a bit of a hike through the woods uh, to get here uh, even though the property's next door it's, it's a bit of a hike to get to the field but I'm going to show you what I've got before I go back home and get a bag or two and uh, come back here and harvest this crop so this is the first tree and I made plant tags but I never uh, put them on the tree. <laughs> yeah. And, but I, I wrote down what these are. I'm gonna get the plant tags and I'm going to uh, put them on and figure out what these are. Oh my gosh, look at this. Look at that. Do you see it? Ah, oh, it's a small deer. Wait, let's get focused here. Look at that. I did not see that. That is a deer. Got its leg caught in the fence and died and is decomposed. Wow. And the, so the fence worked. Poor deer. Wow. Okay, so uh, back to the apples. Here we have, there we have a beautiful apple. Look at that. Uh, we can say that's organic. I haven't sprayed it. And I think I should take a bite out of that. You know, that apple tastes really good. Get that in focus there. Look at that nice yellowish flesh. Yeah, this is, uh, these are heirloom varieties. But, okay, let's check out this next tree. It's a different variety. I don't see any deer caught in there. There we go. These, this is a yellow apple. There's a pretty one right there. I'll pick that one. I can only eat one apple at a time. There we go. Nice. I'll put that in my pocket. We'll go over to the next one here. You can see I got the fence. Maybe you can see it. Camouflaged by weeds. And I put a hardware cloth down there to keep the mice from eating it. Now let's check the next tree. And see how that one's doing. All right, you know, there's nothing like having an apple off your own tree. <laughs> no apples here, but we've got grapes. Wild grapes. See them? Yeah, this place is wild. I've got a brush hog, but I don't have a tractor anymore to put, run it, so what good is that? I've got to get this field chopped down. 
there is with the sumax there's an apple tree but no apples no apples no dead decaying deer huh oh but we've got more grapes here the wild grapes isn't that something I think I got a taste one of them We grow grapes, Concords. That's a bitter grape. Hope it wasn't something else poisonous. All right, well, you know what? That's about it. I got three trees with apples that I'm gonna harvest. No apples on this one. Boy, they just, they're wild going all over the place. There's another one. No apples on that one. I'm done, I gotta go get the bag. I'm gonna get my cutters and cut these this grapevines off. That's the least I can do here. So, just to give you a, a sense of my woods in this stream as I make my way home. This stream, we had a rain last night, so we've got some water in it. Get a big rain, this thing really becomes a torrent. But uh, otherwise, it's uh, a trickle or a nice flow, like you see here. We've got little, it, this is a shale bottom creek, and we've got little waterfalls along the way. It's really beautiful. I've got my Le Chamou. Let me show you. Where are they? Right there, my Le Chamou, the camel, French rubber, all natural rubber boots that I bought years ago and I, I did a blog post about them because natural rubber boots are better. And I'm going to do a review of these Le Chamou. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but it sounds, it sounds right to me. Look at that. Yeah, they're keeping my feet. Wait a minute, I think I've got a leak. Well, the beautiful thing about rubber, natural rubber boots is that uh, you can use a tire patch on them. And I may need to do that. I feel a little bit of moisture on the bottom of my foot. Hmm, but I've had these for years. I expect to have them for a lifetime. They're that good of a, uh, a boot. And uh, yeah, so okay, so there's there's my house up there. I'm gonna get those bags. So I'm gonna see if uh, see these socks. Darn tough socks. Best socks money can buy. Oh, look at that. Wait a minute, can you see that? That's gonna be a hard fix. Gee whiz. Ah. Oh. Not good. We'll uh, look at that. The Le Shamu have let me down. I'm, I'm going to fix that though. I'm a little disappointed, but it's to be expected eventually. Okay, this has turned into a real uh, documentary, I guess. I'm heading back. That's a view from my backyard right there. Talk about waterfalls. And uh, yeah, look at that chain hoist. <laughs> That chain hoist has been there a long time. When my kids were home and they were hunters, they hung their deer on that chain hoist. It was, uh, it was a freebie we got when the neighbor moved. He had a, uh, he told us we could go into his pole barn and take anything that was left. And we got that chain hoist and a bunch of other stuff. He, uh, yeah, he was a good neighbor. He let me use the field next to my home for uh, growing my garlic crop. He told me we could do anything we wanted on it. There's a project for me down there. See that culvert uh, section? That rusty culvert pipe? That, uh, I told you, you know, when it really rains hard, it turns into a torrent. Well, way up the stream is the road. 
and that actually washed out from way up the stream uh, at that road crossing down here. I gotta, I gotta, I'm gonna get my generator. Well, someday when I feel uh, really ambitious and come down here with a sawzall and cut that thing up and get it out of the creek. These creek uh, or these uh, uh, these gullies, kind of that's what this is, all through upstate New York here, and they were uh, farmers used to dump their junk. They used to have their own dumps along these gullies, and that was the case uh, where we brought our our acre and a half back there. Uh, uh, the original homestead many years ago back in the 80s and uh, there was a, a farm dump there and I've you know hauled all kinds of stuff out of that some of it quite interesting um, and it keeps coming to the surface and washing uh, down into the creek and we pick it up this looks like a good spot to cross it's uh, I'm gonna get my foot wet here but it's okay, we're gonna fix those boots. Get a view down the stream. All right, I'm gonna get over to the apple trees now. Well, I'm back. I'm back here at the apple trees and I am prepared. I've got my bottom feeder bag that uh, if you've watched my eBay videos, you know about. And I brought my uh, good quality Felco number eight uh, cutters to get the grape vines off. And I've got my um, Japanese Ichiban Samurai pruning saw. This is an awesome tool. Extremely sharp. I'm going to cut the sumacs that uh, were over there down. By the way, I have decided that I need to get out here this winter and prune these trees to some degree. But I've got one more thing here. Right here. This, I, did, I didn't bring my plant tags. They're down in the hoarder house. But here we go. Let me turn this around. This, amazingly I found this. It was in my file cabinet in the miscellaneous file. That's where I thought it would be. So I, it shows the trees. Black Oxford right here is my first one. Then I go to the golden russet, which number two and number three were golden russets. Well, anyway, there you go. According to my diagram, this is a Newton Pippin or Newtown Pippin. No apples on this. Not looking as good as those others. Maybe it's the soil. Maybe it's uh, just not its time to flourish. But uh, we have good sumac here. And I'm going to just show you how nice this saw works, cutting a sumac. But I also thought I'd show you. Can you see that? That is a big woodchuck hole. And um, we've got deer scrapings on the side of that sumac. Deer love this field because it's a it's a haven for them. They can hide in here. They're safe in here for the most part. If they go into those woods, uh, they're not so safe. But yeah, let me get this uh, amazing saw out. Just show you how how well it works. Let me get get us some good position here. Camera in one hand, saw in the other. That's a sharp, very sharp saw. As I'm working around these trees, cutting out the sumac and the grape, the grapes and looking them over, I can see that my fence has made a difference. In addition to catching little unfortunate little deer, it has allowed the main trunk to uh, grow without being uh, damaged by deer. But I think the deer, I'm pretty sure the deer have browsed around the perimeter of the fence. And I think that's okay at this point. I, I, if I cut the lower uh, branches off, uh, some of them, and encourage the upward and outward growth of these trees, with a little bit of pruning the the and protect the core the um the deer won't be able to reach most of the apples these are full-size trees 
uh, and not they're not small trees they're full-size trees I planted them to last for uh, generations that was the thought uh, and and maybe they will but the uh, but I the point is here the fence was worthwhile it was an investment all those T posts and the fencing but it has protected the trees for the most part and that's good and uh, yeah so the upward growth upward and outward will these trees will be fine they'll the deer will not harm them to any significant degree all right just an observation there in case you want to uh, pursue the benign neglect orchard approach well i'm all done i got a pretty good uh, bunch of apples here in this bag very very pleased with that i got one other kind of apple here this is an enterprise there's like half a dozen of these on one tree i am a very pleased to say the least to find out it's been at least a year since i've been out here to see what i encountered here today i have uh, great hope now for this uh, a little orchard. I think uh, everything's going to survive. These trees are going to continue to do well and, and do better. I'm going to get out here. I'm going to prune them in the, in the winter. I'm going to maybe expand the fence a little. I'll do the bare minimum to help them along, get them shaped, cut the lower branches off so the deer aren't uh, eating them like I think I've said already in the video. But I just want to tell you, I want to conclude by telling you that uh, this uh, orchard uh, is a dream renewed. I had kind of lost hope in it. I was discouraged and I've come out here and the dream the dream is um, More than just growing apples. It's more than just having My own trees like this and having them be productive. The dream is to have apple trees and That are productive and that I can come out here with my children and my grandchildren. I've got five young grandchildren so far, maybe there'll be more, and um, to come out here to pick apples and to make apple cider all together as a family, to make great memories around making cider, picking the apples. Uh, the, the grandchildren are pretty young yet, maybe in two years they could uh, participate in this to a large degree, all of them, a few of them can right now, they're old enough, but. But yeah, in a couple of years, make our own cider. And um, if you don't know, I've written a book about how to make your own uh, whiz-bang apple uh, grinder and cider press. And part of that, in the introduction to that book, I tell the story of uh, making cider with my friend Ed up in Vermont, first time. And, um, and, this, and the cider smiles that come when you take the first sip of your own homemade cider. That's, uh, that's the dream right there with my family, making memories for them, with them, and that they'll grow up with those great memories. Okay, that's the dream. There's still hope. I think it'll happen, and I'll put a little more effort into making it happen. Thank you very much for watching.